Okay. Okay. So I'm going to call to order. Uh, this is the February 28, 2020 uh, meeting of the Parks and Rec Board. And um, we would like to do a roll call. So I'm Leif Bissell. Jim Fry. Aaron Hutchison. Okay. You guys want to? John Rickard and um, Carolyn Palmer here also. Okay. Uh, so let's move into the approval of minutes from uh, December 27, which was our last meeting. Um, do I hear a motion? So moved. Okay. Got a second? Second. All right. So the uh, minutes are approved. And uh, okay, we've got on our consent agenda also uh, adopt rules of parliamentary procedure. So I don't know if somebody wants to pick this up, but. So um, the consent agenda is just all one. Okay. For approval. The agenda for today's meeting, the minutes, and then that is um, just kind of an FYI parliamentary procedure. Okay. So it doesn't require a motion or anything or approval? Just one motion for the whole consent agenda. Okay. Which those items are contained in. Okay. So that's not the minutes. This is in a consent, consent agenda. Well, the minutes would be com combined in the consent agenda. Okay. So then good. We're already good then. So if you say that your motion, your first and second, is good for the uh, consent agenda, then that would stand. Okay. So. <clears throat> Yeah, so my motion was to approve the consent agenda. Okay. Yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> we got it. All right, so there's the Korean War uh, Memorial um, by Mr. Jacobson. And here. And here. So, really quick, can you say all in favor of the. Consent? Sure, all in favor, yeah, since we are talking about sure. rules of order. Aye. 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 Great. Okay. Sure. <laughs> it is. More copy. More copy. Um, I sent out your brochure last week. I There's Tito. Yes. Morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Do you know if is uh, Mike going to be here? No, he is not. No, he is here. Okay. Three. But he Perfect. will listen to the audience. Okay, great. This is his business card. Okay. Take another guy. Thanks. If you have one left over, I'll use it to follow you guys. Oh, right? yeah. There it is. You want one now? Sure. My name is Neil Jacobson. I live here in College Place, 418, <coughs> Southeast Third. Uh, I'm a veteran. Also, the adjutant for the American Legion Post 32 in Walla Walla, which has absorbed your American Legion Post from College Place. As soon as I, I got back into town, we got the World War II Memorial moving. Have you been up to see it? Yeah. You gotta go take a look at it. It's, it's magnificent. We have recently discovered two more names that we're going to put on the monument for a total of 93 uh, from our area. And right now we have the Gold Star Mother Monument being built. Are you aware of that? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, it's going to be at Myra and um, Dallas Military Road. Now Walla Walla has almost every war except the Korean War and the current war we're in, monuments. <clears throat> so what I would like to get the approval of from you guys is I saw went down and looked at your veterans park. It's a really nice place. Nice nice beautiful park. And as I was standing there looking I'm going, this is where it needs to be. The Korean War to honor the fourteen soldiers and sailors and Marines that died in Korea. And they need to be honored. It's called the Forgotten War. In fact I just visited our Don Shock yesterday. He's terminally ill. He flew in Vietnam or Korea, Vietnam as an Air Force man. 
And we talked about getting this for those guys. Uh, so I, what I'm asking you to do is someone from you, if you guys agree to do, move forward or you like the idea, to one of you to go to the city council and say, we like this idea. And then we'll form a committee. I'm going to try to have, I'd like to have at least one or two of you guys and a couple of Korean guys. And we'll design. So we have time now to design, locate and design the uh, monument. We're not going to spend any funds. We're just doing the designing phase. What's it going to look like? How do we want it to look? It's because I, I promised the uh, Gold Star Mothers I would not be in competition with them while they're in the process of building their memorials. Now, I've talked to one gentleman already. I saw the product that he made. He did it up at Brooks Park. He makes rocks, believe it or not. And uh, he wants to come in and share with you at one of your meetings about the product and what he would do for us. And it could be anything you want it to be. It could be, if you want to have a bronze plaque, we can, you can do whatever you want. So I'm asking you people to design, help me design the, the uh, monument. And once we have the design finished, and we all agree this is what we want, then we'll seek bids for how much it's going to cost and go from there for monetary. Now, the American Legion Post is a 5013C, and we voted on it uh, a month ago, and we re-voted on it this last Wednesday that we would be the fiscal agent for it. In other words, because when we did the World War II, Fort Walla Walla was the fiscal agent, but they charged us 5% to handle the money, which I'm going, well, hey. <laughs> so we won't charge anything. You know, we would just be the people who receive the funds and then disperse the funds for you, because I don't need you to have any more work. That's why we would like to do it that way. If that's, and it'd be, we'll just open up a separate account through our banner bank, and it would just say Korean War Memorial Fund. And it would just be, we'll all be quite transparent. We're not charging a dime for the service. We just want to get it built. So with that, we have, what, 14 names? Yeah, 14 names of the we know of at this point in time. And my wife, as soon as we're done writing the book on the 93, which is going to be a massively beautiful book, We've done the whole story of these people, right down to the day of the battle, where they were. Some of the stories are just, these guys were brave. I mean, so we need to get honor them too. So if you have any questions with me, I'm, I'm open to take any question you have. Do you have a timeline for the project? No, it's, it's uh, totally how fast you guys want to move. I mean, it's, uh, I want to take the time to do the research, figure out what do you want, how do you get made of, and then we can come up with some cost breakdowns. Because your park, I went out and looked at it, and that entrance is a beautiful spot for it. You've got a flagpole there, you've got a light, which takes a big chunk of the cost out. And the reason why I'm looking at this one is it's so much cheaper than hauling in huge rocks or getting marble done or granite. <clears throat> That's expensive. But it's up to you guys. It's whatever you want. Do you have a rough idea of the cost of the project? I haven't even got the way what it looks like yet. Okay. We have so to you, decide. Just, you just have the concept. We have, well, it's, you, can do, you can have a, a marble slab with the names engraved, or you can do a, a marble slab with a bronze plaque on it. You know, we'd have to look and see what it's going to cost and how we're going to pay for it. So this is just the groundbreaking. Nothing's done, because I'm not going to try to design it. I want you guys to design it. It's your park, and we'll just help you to someday get it done. I don't want, so I need you guys to figure out what do you want to do. If you want to move forward, great. If you don't, that's okay too. So there are resources uh, that um, look for projects. People who uh, are either on some uh, committee or part of a, a group of people who are looking for uh, things that um, they'd like to support as community members. And this might be a, a really good opportunity for some initiative to uh, uh, look into the details of this. Um, there's uh, uh, Tito and I uh, are part of a, a group of people who uh, are working with the uh, Sherwood Trust. Mm -hmm. 
to well, we worked with Sherwood Trust and their answer to us <coughs> to the World War II pro product uh, mine that was no. Okay, well, there are other groups and yes. people, pe groups of people who uh, might be willing to and interested in the, the uh, project that you have in mind. Well, I know the city of College Place twice donated a large sum of money for the World War II and the Gold Star Monument. Mm -hmm. And that's really grateful. I would anticipate or hope that they would be the same graciousness for this one. But I want to wait till after the, World, the monument of the Gold Star is finished. So it gives us time. And I don't know when that's going to be finished. I'm going to say within a year or two years. They got the place, they got the marbles being cut, and they're getting the funds right now. So it gives us time to plan it rather than rush into it. So if we can form a committee, uh, I'll, I got people, I got a couple of veterans that are just, yeah, 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 I'll help. So as far as money, we'll just find it where it is. We'll roll, look under every rock. It's there. We just got to find it. The, the town, the, the Waitsburg College Place in Walla Walla, we were just amazing how much money they helped with the World War II. And the local uh, construction outfits donated 50 yards of concrete, rebar, labor, free lights, sidewalks. They came out of, they just, it was unbelievable how much they came out of this. So you need to go up, take a look at it, see what that's, but we're not doing anything that spectacular. That was over 700,000 with in kind and donations. Are there, are there questions? Where would it be located? Pardon? Where would it be located? The, the Korean War. I went out to your new park, your Veterans Park out here. I saw it in the paper, so I wanted to go look at it. And I said, this is a perfect spot for it. Okay. College Place doesn't have a memorial like that. And we don't know who these gentlemen were or where they were located from all of County, but we'll research that. There may be one from College Place that perished. We don't know at this point in time. All I have is names. Questions? Okay. As a grandson of two uh, veterans, I'd be honored to, to partner with you and do some work. So I'd, I'd Could you be the committee. liaison between the parks and the city then? Sure. Okay. Because that's a good, that's a good connection we will need. Sure. So if you guys approve this, I guess the next step would take it to the city council and have them give us the blessing to move forward. I'm not going to move without their permission. Because they're going to have to dedicate the land, the space. And I'm sure, positive sure, that Hayden Holmes would be happy to help us, whatever it takes to get that monument done. So I'm looking at all kinds of things in my head. I'm looking at a big, huge boulder with a brass plaque on it, or you could put a marble pillar up, or whatever you guys want. You know, it's, it's up to you what you want. Uh, you know, as a suggestion, um, I think, first off, Thank you for your service, and I don't think that there's any resistance in this group in any way to show honor to the veterans and their dedication and sacrifice. Um, it might be helpful to have um, maybe a few options to choose from. Absolutely. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, we could go this direction or this direction or this direction and um, have, uh, you know, some fiscal uh, idea about what each of those options might cost um, and that would help uh, I think support coalesce around ideas um, at, at this point it's uh, pretty um, you know it's kind of like everything is open um, that would that makes it more difficult to uh, um, get specific with uh, you know what's required, I think that's a good idea. That we could have like three options. Sure, we could do this molded, handmade rock, which the gentleman would like to come and explain to you the product, so they're not sort of comfortable with it, and uh, what he's willing to do for us, because they did the ones at Brooks Park for uh, Eagle Scout building that, and that's be this would be a fantastic project for an Eagle Scout. This would just be fantastic. So if you know any Eagles, people look at be. An Eagle Scout project, this is a good one for them. And how do you say no to an Eagle Scout? Sure seem great. Um, I mean, this group is creating more memorials. You know, they're not large memorials. Um, they're very, it's 
inspire me. Why don't you get a committee together? I think that would be probably part of the, the task of the committee is to choose a, a product, come up with you know, some examples, um, and at some point, um, and maybe the city <coughs> could provide some seed money if, if we're going to you know, help sponsor this to help develop a professional design so we can go out like the other um, groups have done for, for you know, the memorial and um, go around and you know, ask for money. You need to have a good, uh, a good representation of what it is that you're doing with We have to have a product before you ask for money. Right, and that's so, what I'm talking about is, is that, that committee yes. needs, to, needs to get together and, and figure out, you know, is it granted, is it this product that is suggesting, or, you know, exactly. some bronze. Uh, there's there's a, some really cool ones where they're actually bronze statues of soldiers walking. Um, that is more money than you can afford. Well, <laughs> I, well you know, I mean, we have a gen <coughs> We have a gentleman here in Walla Walla, excuse me, <coughs> I think his last name is Hill. I already met with him, and he's excited to do that. And I go, well, let's just see how it looks. The statue would be fantastic. You could just take a, a World War II uniform type thing, and that would be a statue represents everybody, not just one person. And we have, we do have a foundry. <laughs> yes, we do. We, we have a foundry. We also have, uh, we implemented some rules for uh, public art, and for it what? might be an, a public art. Um, so if we if we were to have a statue that um, somehow uh, was at the intersection of art and a memorial, uh, that could be a really interesting thing. Uh, so far, we don't have public art. We actually ran. Place. We were actually when we were beginning this, that was one of the things. But the Wall Wall had a group of people that wanted to be in control of the art, and this is not art. This is a memorial. And we say, no, this is not an art. An art's not artistic. It's a memorial. As long as we're having wars and we're sending men and women into battle, we need to honor their sacrifices. I wish we didn't have wars. I mean, I went to D.C. and I was going, why so many wars? So, so you, you will get a hold of me with your schedule. I'm tired. Yeah, so, so right now what I see is that we're at step one. We're, right. We've got yes. create a committee, and then we'll do some light work, and, and then... Um, Cycle back, right? Yeah. You can see. Did this forward yet? Or well, no, I think what we're what we're at is we're at stage one. Yeah, which we're is just a, exploring. Yeah, like I think. we're exploring. I, would, I don't I think would, that this would, requires any kind of emotion or anything. It's basically you. just what do we need to do yeah. to help support it. I would encourage the concept to be voted on, not the item. So the concept of the memorial is what do we need to vote on, and that needs to go to the council and say, yes, this is what we're wanting to do. Do would you support it? And then we're going to move forward. So somebody could make a motion uh, to uh, agree to like who's going to chair maybe a committee, uh, and and um, and part of that process is you need to form a committee. Who's on the committee? And we're going to. We can't have all of you on the committee. Well, we uh, can't have a forum. We can't have a forum. But also, we need to we need to reach out to the veterans. I mean, there's veterans that are going to be on this committee. Um, maybe a staff person. I don't know. Well, if you guys do, if we move it to the city council and they approve, then we'll go to the paper and make a news news a news item seeking veterans to volunteer. I mean, I, they, you have to ask them to volunteer before you get appointed. them. I have uh, Dale Fisher who's interested in doing this. He's our vice commander. So we could, if the committee, if the car board wishes, we could also go to city council and get their blessing to form a committee. Um, to and, and the park. Is, is um, statutorily is that required? I, I, I'm I guessing would, not. I would doubt it. Um, well. At least it wasn't in Walla. Well, I would guess um, the codes probably be pretty similar. I don't it's think that it, it's the board, the park board, can create a ad hoc committee sure. to work with this and bring something back to the council to approve when you have right. something in. in there needs to be more substance yeah. put together 
before it's really ready to go to. Okay. And that's where you want a real counselor. Well, I, can, I have a gentleman that uh, called uh, in Oregon that did the m m marble work for uh, World War II, and they're also doing the um, Gold Star. I can reach out to him and say, what's your suggestion? Because he says, I've built hundreds of these. But he says, it's only a matter of how much money you want to spend. Sure. He's got it. We, our, our granite came from Vermont, and the shipping was what killed us. <laughs> yes, I am like, whoa! Mm -hmm. You take a 72,000 pound rock and ship it across the states, it's, uh, it's rather spendy rather quick. So I want, to, I want to avoid having to hire cranes, landscaping, digging, foundations. I mean, there will be some kind of foundation, but with, with this product here, it's not, you don't need a, ours was a two foot deep foundation with rebar under two inches. Yeah, because in my mind, I see it kind of sitting off that concrete <coughs> path that surrounds the flagpole there. Um, of course, we've got a sidewalk. It's a wall, perfect things spot. That we have to, to contend with. Yeah, but. it's a perfect spot. Um, so, how do you want to proceed? Well, your motion. So, let me try and put this together. So, what I feel like our role is to to, to make a motion to support moving this forward. Yeah. Uh, for for further exploration. So, I, I move that we. Uh, uh, support creating a committee to um, determine the the steps moving forward in order to create a Korean uh, memorial at Veterans Park. Does that make okay. sense? Sure. Second. Second. Uh, we have a vote here. All in favor say aye. 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 So, so I'll reach out to you, Neil. Okay. okay. Yep. Thank you very much. I don't get up this early anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You've earned it. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. So the next presentation is an Earth Day project by the Lions Club. And I, could you help me with your name? Uh, Nadine Stefline. Okay. Terrific. Go for it. Hi. Uh, my name is Nadine Steckline. I live at 338. Southeast Highland Park Drive, and um, I'm part of the College Place Lions. And one of the um, uh, events that we have is, or that we support, is Earth Day. Um, we were here at the Fall Festival that the city hosted. We had a young man come up to us and say, "Hey, we don't have any bat boxes." And then we were like, "What are bat boxes?" You know. And so we did some research into them. Um, and so here's a picture of one of them. They have different chambers. Um, in the spring is a perfect time. So as many people know, Earth Day is April 22nd. Um, spring and summer is when most insects come out, as you may know. So that's when bats like to come out. And um, they're actually losing all their, not all their, they're losing a lot of habitats due to global warming and due to people cutting down, you know, trees or, um, using their habitat to build homes. Um, and so this bat box provides a climate um, that is a safe place to sleep and it is um, somewhere that's warm. They really like the warmth. And I was looking at a map about um, the Pacific Northwest and, and bat box colors. And so they um, actually, this is not the right color for our area. It would be more of a darker cedar color or a black box because those would trap more heat during the day and the bats would feel warm and cozy. Um, and they actually fly in from the, from the bottom and they just like go inside and on the little grooves is where they kind of climb up. Um, so I'm here before you to see if we, um, as the Lions Club, could build one bat box and put it in Lions Park. Um, I don't know where. I would love to work with folks in your, um, in a department, city department, to see the logistics through in terms of where, when. But we would want to start building it on Earth Day so that we can have a, a project to come together. And we would invite um, folks to help out. Great. Yeah. So, but were there, were there any other, uh, are there questions here or any other things you want to bring up? Okay. Questions? 
Is this the only um, the only project you guys have? You, um, is there any other projects as alternatives for Earth Day? Oh, um, well, so in the past we worked with the city to do Creek, Garrison Creek, what do I call it? Cleanup. Yeah. Cleanup, yeah, thank you, cleanup. And it's the weather is too cold um, to be in the mud and stuff like that, so that was what we used to do. Um, Alternatives to Earth Day. We were just seeking this one, and then we could think of a backup. We don't. I don't have one. Okay. And the reason I, I bring that up is because I think that we need to look at everything that entails having this at Lions Park, mm -hmm. um, from a safety a reason. Yeah. From uh, you know, I know bats carry bacteria with them as well. So mm -hmm. tampering with it, how accessible it's going to be. Kids like to play and touch things, and um, you know, safe for the bats as well. So. I think that we need to look at all that stuff. And then we're in the midst of thinking of remodeling Lions Park as a yeah. whole, as an overall plan. So, you know, looking at these elements, where would they fall into place, mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. So that's the that's new concern. Yep. Um, I was reading online about that. So the bat boxes have to be really high up um, so, so kids couldn't get to them. They wouldn't be on a tree where they could, you know, go because they have to do that vertical. Um, up. And then, like I mentioned, they actually eat a lot of insects that bring bad stuff. So, um, yeah, but I, I agree that there has to be more research. Um, I'm not sure where to go with that, though. Cause yeah, all which, the is, which is why I asked if you had a plan A, B, or C, you know, other alternatives that we could look into. Because I think, I think it's worthwhile to look into an Earth Day project, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just, just from that perspective. Yeah. Into it. How, how high up do they normally be? They, they said be at least they need um, clearance of 15 to 20 feet below. So they have to be at least 15 to 20 feet high. Um, either in, yeah, so stabilizing the temperature and in a tree. Okay, that's great. Do we see any uh, sort of maintenance issues with this, uh, John, or anybody else? Is there anything from that standpoint we would want to consider? It's a back box. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. So they typically mm -hmm. use untreated wood, cedar wood, which doesn't have the rot rotting element. Like, so if they were to bring in insects to eat, I did some research and we would be using cedar wood or non-treated wood if um, possible. And so the maintenance, um, you don't go in there and you don't do anything. You just put it up. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, so that sounds really great. Uh, I mean, from my standpoint, uh, anything that beats a mosquito is a good thing. So, as long as it's not eating me too. <laughs> So, that entire bat. Um, so, do we want a motion here, or are we just uh, collecting this information? Do you want to come back with additional ideas, or um, uh, where do we want to go from this? I didn't have any additional ideas, so you can approve or not approve it, is what I'm looking for. So, if you don't approve it, we could just go with some other F day event. Okay. Do we want to? Um, we, we hear a motion. I move to approve uh, installing a bat box in Lions Park. Okay. Second. I would like to add to that amendment some of the things that you said as far as um, location, where, you know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so just some safety precautions as yeah. well, making sure that that is, that we get a say in how high up it goes Absolutely. and where, where it gets hung. Um, so I think that that's part of it too. So without it. So, Thank you for coming. So, go ahead. The uh, Lions Public Work of Tall Hardway and the location of mm -hmm. the campus was really a new system, the installation of those systems. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sounds like the motion is we support putting in a bat box pending on a, on a like making sure that, that the maintenance department. Uh, is okay with wherever it's hung, mm -hmm. and uh, assists in the process of putting it up. Mm -hmm. Is that what I'm hearing? Okay. So the motion. Do you need to re-say that? I think, I think we, we all. Yeah. 
so. Yeah, <laughs> it's being yeah. recorded. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yes, I agree with what you said. <laughs> okay. And there's a second or second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. All right. Does the motion carry or not? It does. Yes. So you're going to get back then with uh, our maintenance people. Is that Paul? You Paul Harper. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, recreational recreation financial policies is up next. So who's going to uh, this was talk with us about this? This would normally be Mike's zone, right? I have not. Uh, so I'm assuming you guys, because he's asking for you to make a motion that you guys have seen this before. No? Well, it was brought to the meeting in January where there was no quorum, but so it's been on the agenda for a while. It was also brought in December, and um, Mike talked about it in the December meeting. Yeah. Um, I think it would be uh, wise for us to um, put this piece of business off until we have Mike here. Is um, there um, a particular area of concern that um, I would like to <clears throat> um, I don't know, do, does, it, does everybody feel comfortable moving this forward or do we want to wait for Mike to articulate what, he, what he's after here? He's wanting you to recommend a recreation financial policy for, to council for adoption. Uh, I need further explanation. I, I have not read this document, so I, I can't uh, say either way. If, if I could just add, yeah, this is basically a fees and charges policy, financial policy. It kind of governs how the recreation program will um, implement a fee structure or a non-fee structure. Um, whether or not you have resident fees and non-resident fees, those aspects. I, I think it's, um, I would agree with Larry that Michael needs to really present it in fall so the board has a good, strong feeling where the recreation program is going to go from a cost standpoint. That being, um, from, from my history, having three departments, three different departments with fees and charges policies, um, it, it really sets the guidelines for you. And it's really an important document. It's probably the most important document a Parks and Rec agency can have from a policy standpoint approved by council. Because that, that gives you where you're allowed to go and where you're not allowed to go from a staffing standpoint. So my recommendation would be to call the chair and hopefully Mike will be available next meeting and he can present uh, the whole the whole policy. I think there's some things that probably maybe are not in there that could be added just from my knowledge. Okay, so are we all right pushing this on? Yeah. yeah. Do we need to run that through uh, sort of a vote, or are we good with the table? Table. Just a motion to table. Okay. Uh, is uh, <coughs> there a motion to table then? So moved. Okay. So moved. Second. I'll second that. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Okay, so we have some old business. 
And I'm going to turn to Tito here about uh, what this uh, is about. Sure. So uh, as part of the Rural Development Initiative Program, um, the cohort decided to undertake the parklet off 12th Street. So the group decided to take this project and see it from concept to completion. Um, so we have different committees within that group, which Leif and I are part of. And we really want to um, take this project and, and make it a reality. Uh, we've already started working on it. Uh, the team is working on coming up with a concept that they can bring to the board and have approval run by you uh, and then see where we go from there. They're also working, or we're also working on fundraising, so there will be a fundraising portion coming from the team. And from previous conversations, my understanding was that Mike said there were about $10,000 uh, budgeted for this type of project. Uh, so we want to also confirm that that is the case uh, with the city for, for that um, so that we can bring some funds from the fundraising activity um, and also use the funds from the city to really make something good uh, that adds value to the community. Uh, so that's what we have um, in store and we're excited about it um, and want to open it up for questions, concerns uh, that you guys have at this moment. <clears throat> looks nice. I'm curious who will be maintaining the park. Do we have staff to do that? Is that we an have, additional, yeah. not, not a big deal? Or? Um, so it's public works. We have one <clears throat> person that maintains our parks. Um, and so I, I think that you know, a, a low maintenance type of park crucial the concept is a zero escape park so we want to go as as um, minimalist as possible um, so that is the concept we don't want to create something that's going to add more work to the city it will add work because it will need to be maintained in some sort but very minimally by the design that we're trying to implement for sure and we'll have more of a, of a fully designed concept by the end of March. So that's when the team will come and present at the next uh, board meeting after that. And then um, the board will decide if it's a feasible concept, you know, what questions there are on the design, and uh, so on and so forth. So next month's meeting. Uh, I believe so, yeah, because we said uh, a deadline for it. Yeah, well, we're, uh, I mean, I'm a little bit behind on uh, being up to speed on everything that the um, Sherwood Trust people are working on, but my understanding is uh, we're going to get to a sketchy kind of um, concept, maybe a two or three uh, directions that the park could go, um, and uh, we'd like to get some input um, to make sure that the direction that things are headed is the direction we want. Um, and once that is established, um, and we get some more feedback, I think the next step would be to do something a little more uh, thorough when it comes to rendering it. Um, <clears throat> so take it from concept stage into something that's uh, more like what you see in that photograph uh, where um, Mike has talked a little bit with us uh, that um, once the idea is a little more settled, uh, we could engage uh, the group that created that and um, sort of uh, solidify the design a little more thoroughly. Um, from the Sherwood Trust side, uh, that I think is a really important threshold to get um, to because it helps uh, us um, target exactly what we're spending money on and um, then we can uh, settle out on whatever we have coming for in-kind donations and engagement with uh, people. So we all have a very, um, Accurate target to uh, to uh, you know shoot at. So um, I think what you're going to see uh, in the next meeting is going to be um, some sketchy renderings that show um, where we're headed, and we'll get an idea about what we want to do from there. And I believe the Sherwood Trust is going to uh, provide five thousand dollars for the project. So that plus the um, 
fundraising that the group will do, plus what the city can uh, provide. Uh, I think we'll more than provide enough funds to, to see the project come to fruition. <coughs> Questions or just concerns? Just, just, is this uh, Sherwood leadership class? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, that wasn't clear. Sherwood, Sherwood Trust uh, supports a company called RDI, um, Rural Development Initiatives, Initiatives um, to put on uh, a leadership class for um, members that are invited into this group. And Tito and I just happen to be two of the people on that group, in that group, um, what was it, about 35 people um, that are members of the community, and then leadership that comes from RDI. Um, so this has been the project that uh, they've selected out of, what, probably a half dozen, maybe uh, eight, eight or ten yeah. different That's projects. Good, good projects yeah. in the community. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so are there any other questions about what, what uh, is going on with this? So we could add it to next month's uh, agenda. I think would be good so we can let the team know and we can have a group come and present. And they'll send me the stuff to include in the packet so people can take a look at it? Yes, I'll, I'll make sure that's done. Okay, well, we'll move on to the next uh, old business agenda item then, unless there are other questions. So, um, second RCO grant attempt. John. Um, so, there, there are grants open uh, just recently for, uh, from RCO um, for development projects. There's the WWRP, which is the um, the one that we can apply for recreation grants. Um, there's five hundred thousand dollars available for that project or for those grants. That's the, the cap. If you're if you're acquiring land, you can, you can uh, apply for the grant. Um, and then we have the there's a the LWCF, and that one would be applicable towards like dredging ponds. Um, that. So Mike and I are going to um, tag team on this because the process is pretty extensive. Although for the LP, the, uh, the WWRP, um, probably just a lot of information we had last time to change things. Um, so what we're looking for is um, your a recommendation to, to apply for these grants. Um, we have, I guess, Jim, you, you weren't here last time. I wasn't here last time. But last time, uh, we, we went through this process. So if you're not familiar, we, um, we've been planning to renovate uh, Lions Park. And the concept was, um, one was to get a splash pad in the park. Uh, that was our, our big ticket item. Uh, and also we do the playground. And then we also wanted to provide some uh, active recreation for um, for people that like to walk in parks. Um, so we, we have a quarter mile uh, walking path. Um, also add, we need to dredge the pond. It's silted in. It's, it's a hazard. The pathway around it's a hazard. It slopes in. Um, it's just gross. Um, the Fish and Wildlife stocks that pond uh, for fishing therapy every year, and they keep threatening. In fact, they've, they've reduced the amount of fish they put in it um, because there's the, the water, it just gets too warm and it's not good habitat for the fish. Um, but they're still, they're still stocking it, but um, it needs to be dredged. Uh, part of that, we'd also um, provide a, a fishing dock or platform, it's so people that have disabilities can actually get out far enough uh, to be able to fish uh, from that. Um, we would retain uh, the ball field area, but um, we would remove the bleachers, um, and uh, there's a, I think 
if there's a small building that we take out um, the, during that condition. Um, so, a couple of times last year at the farmer's market, um, I had these boards up uh, and I got a lot of feedback from, from the public. They were very favorable um, of the project. I did, however, hear that um, people like the playground, they like the location. Um, there are some safety issues that need to be addressed with that. But we did increase the fall protection underneath it this year, um, but there probably could be some additional work that needs to be evaluated from the safety standpoint. Um, they like the swings. Uh, so the feedback I was getting was, uh, let's just enhance the playground, let's add more amenities to it rather than um, eliminate it. Let's make sure it's safe. And if we do need to eliminate some of the equipment, then we will. That would be my my, my approach. Um, but but add to it. You know, it's it's dated. Uh, let's make it more fun. We can still we can still go with the nature play uh, that we were proposing. So um, what we had a better board that kind of shows that close close up. So um, we were kind of nature theme. That this was the os osprey nest. Uh, the, um, I guess this doesn't show up, but they had some logs that were kind of piled up, like a beaver dam, um, and those sort of things that are fun to play on. We also um, have reached out to the uh, Walla Walla Disability Network. Um, and we wanted to incorporate these expressions of swing um, for disabled children and young adults. Uh, also, we were talking about redoing the picnic shelter. So, um, and new bathrooms. There was also s some concern about the bathrooms being on the south side of the park, but I think if that's the, still the location, the location for the splash pad, which I do think it is, that we need restrooms over there. Um, so, we probably will amend this proposal and look at um, remodeling the existing bathrooms. It would be an extensive remodel. They're not ADA accessible. The men's restroom is disgusting. Uh, I mean, yeah. So is <laughs> No, no worries. So we'll have to update our estimates. Um, uh, but we do have, we, we did budget um, to continue to work with uh, the uh, landscaping firm that we came up with these concepts. So, um, with your blessing, uh, we would move forward. We'd make some tweaks to this, like, like I just discussed, um, and update our um, <coughs> and apply for these grants. And we have a war chest. Uh, I think we have let's say eight hundred thousand dollars. Maybe it's four hundred thousand. Like I said, they held back four hundred thousand, and then they were doing another four hundred thousand. But I don't know if that second one happened. So there's at least four hundred thousand. This is city. You're talking city, city dollars. I think it's eight hundred thousand. I think it was four hundred thousand the year before. And yeah. This year, we were saying we budgeted more than four hundred thousand. So. Um, but the project itself is, I mean, it, we're probably looking at, I think it's close to you know, $3 million by the time everything gets done. So it's, um, we have applied, if you recall, we applied for a Sherwood Trust Grant. They um, were uh, in support of the project, but they didn't want to be, they want to be the last one to you know, fill the gap. They don't want to be the, the main we were also overcommitted um, for that for that e the year we were making the application, so it might be worth another run. Oh yeah, we will we will definitely uh, hit them up again. Um, we did. I think we got was it ten thousand dollars from the previous uh, Sherwood Trust project where the group had extra money left over, and they decided that they wanted to do this project. So 
There's also been, uh, I mean, this happens periodically with any organization, but there's leadership leadership changes in motion right now. So that that may also change some of the objectives and dynamics. But. Sherwood Trust has decided not to award any large grants this year. So 2020 goal is to award 20 $20,000 grants with no requirement for match or any of that. So that's the probably biggest. And the reason for that was the change in leadership and the unsettled. Uh, plus, they have a multitude of ongoing projects that they're um, committed to. One of them being Memorial Pool that has one more year to pay off, which will be 2020. Um, and then the same thing, they have some funds that are with them, the same thing. So I wouldn't expect any, much money from Sugar Trust until 2021, 22, and that's when, that's when you're applying for monies from. Yeah, the, these applications are due May 1st. We won't find out until the, probably November, October, November. If we, and we're it's ready. for a two year. Yeah, funding cycle, right? Right. Yeah, we have. We would have two years to start to run. What's the link? Can you want to talk about that? That's no. I don't know what. Uh, yeah, it yeah. lines up. I think with yeah. well, with what are uh, general rules and about. If you go to you can go go open your thing back up and. And click hover over the grant, I think, out the screen. And then uh, oh. click the grant over the view right there. Go on. He's on. He's in the cohort over there. He's in the cohort over there. Yeah. Which is a good choice. Yeah. Brian's a good choice. Yeah. He's a good dad. Yeah. He'll do a good job. Yeah. 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 So the process is competitive. Uh, it's it's actually it's quite ridiculous the effort you have to go through to try to get a grant. Um, you got to drive on the road and dog the pollution. This is ridiculous, but we're going to do it because it's you know it's a lot of money. Um, apparently, the governor has been getting hearing from a lot of Eastern Washington cities about how we're not represented, we're not getting any money over here. Um, and it's an election year, uh, so we're hopeful that he, and we're hearing that he's been talking to the um, person who manages the, the RCO directly. So, we'll see. <coughs> Is there anything that you need from us as a group that would help in, um, in doing what you guys need to do to get the money? Because obviously it's a really pivotal to make uh, this project happen. I, um, I don't have a dog or a pony. <laughs> but <laughs> if any of you are really good at right, sure. or doing presentations, you know, you're more than welcome to do the presentations or more than <laughs> yeah. Not in. <laughs> I think that uh, you know taking some sort of uh, video of uh, what is there and of families that enjoy and some of the challenges because seeing is believing so you have to sell the concept you have to really sell it so I don't know if you guys have thought of you know maybe doing something brief to showcase the need well, the problem is, the problem is and I totally agree with you but they have very strict you have questions that you have to answer and I mean that they want to know about um, the sustainability of your project so you it, I mean if, if you've ever applied for a government grant or any grant in general I mean they, they're it's a challenge to answer these questions and and, and so you, you've got you've got these these uh, targets that you have to you know, hit and you, you've got like 10 minutes to make your pitch and they limit how much graphics. You can't do videos. You um, can't. You can't. It's just just PowerPoint or it's, slides. It's, or. it's a it's a PowerPoint. So there's like I don't know. There's 20 or 30 slides that you have to have to hit, and you got 
for a while. It's it's very stressful. Um, <laughs> we realize it's you know everybody in the state of Washington wants to apply. Yeah. Yeah. What it is is that it's a hoop jumping a hoop yeah. jumping festival that's designed to be a filter. So you really got to want it, and you got to be ready to execute according to their plan to make it happen. Is that pretty much it? Yeah, yeah and you have to be in the right place at the right time. Maybe, maybe so. the pressure of not, not having money on the eastern side of the mountains will eventually um, come to realization. Because the, most all the money stays on the I-5 corner. It's right. just been the way historically it happens. Right. So, so you mentioned the uh, the swing for uh, people with disabilities for or young people. Um, do we have anything else in any other of our parks that are that that have those sorts of accommodations? So I, I wonder about the um, kind of the uh, power behind that to really making our park accessible. Uh, and I think about if, if, if we had a young person that, that maybe they could recommend that could go with and make a statement about the need overall for the park, but also for making it accessible for um, for people with disabilities. You mentioned the dock, you mentioned the swing. Uh, I think the path is another thing. I mean, those those are some of the things that I mean. I think that sets that apart from just any park redesign. Yeah, I, and we thought the same thing, but uh, and, and we can't and we can't take somebody with us to it. It's okay. not there. Like I said, it's, it's very structured. Not if they're on the committee, planning committee. Um, <coughs> so, okay. So, Just so if in this grant proposal process, if uh, if uh, you know you, you can't bring to bear other tools that might be helpful. Um, will, will, could those other tools be helpful in other contexts? So, what what I uh, you know I'm thinking of is, what if you did do a short video, um, and uh, you had something about the plan, uh, something about its current situation, and uh, sort of painting a picture of what the future would be for this. Also, maybe some vignettes about what the park means to people, whether it's you know. Uh, what happens with uh, the farmers market, or you know, some special event that happens there, or a community being drawn together? I mean, in my case, I got married in that park. I mean, that park is part of my, my life, um, so it's in, it's an important place for me. Um, would that be helpful uh, in either articulating what our goals are uh, to the public, um, and perhaps gain some support there? Um, and get some attention. Uh, would that be helpful? Um, or are uh, are those? I mean, at this point, I know we're looking for the money to do the job, so that's probably the most important thing. But um, there may be some resources that we could draw on, whether they're students from the university or we've got a really skilled group uh, media group here uh, in CM Bell um, that that know this. I mean, this video thing, I can, you can just look at their site. They've done some amazing, more healthcare oriented videos. Um, if that's a helpful thing, I mean, there could be some outreach there that could be done potentially, and some support uh, drummed up from local, local members of the community, perhaps. Um, if that's helpful in the process. Well, that um, could be helpful in fundraising. And I don't think, I mean, like I said, I can't, I can't just click play. I mean, I wish you could have that. So. <laughs> but outside of grants, that, right. I mean, because the, was it Rogers or Rava together, I mean, was it a school project? They were the ones who funded the Fort Walla Walla Playground. That was, no, was, that that was just uh, was Rogers. It? Okay. And it was the teachers in Rogers. I'm just wondering how they... Do an educational project with the kids. Yeah. With that. Centered on the yeah, I mean, I mean, it was a great, was impressive. it was a lot of fun. It was a lot, it was um, good work. Obviously, much smaller scale, but if like there was some sort of group who was like, let's you know, take on just the squash pad or well, the dock yeah. or you know, like own certain parts of it, yeah, yeah, it would be like a class prog. That, that's the sort of stuff that the board members. At RCO, like to see 
And that's the sort of stuff that should have happened last year. I mean, we we have talked to Rogers, uh, you know, about if they'd be interested in the uh, vice principal, and, and they they have said, oh yeah, but nothing's happened. And so, you know, we this, these applications are going to be first, and so we're a little behind the, the ball. Jim, if, um, if the project's three million estimated, and let's say we get double our money from the RCR, so that's one point six. Um, what would we do? Is it prioritized? Um, every portion of the of the master plan is it prioritized, so you can do a portion. Or it's either got to be all or not. How are you approaching it? If you if you pitch if we pitch this and all these amenities, all or not. then that's what you're going to build. You will build everything that you pitch to that if you're ordered. Mm -hmm. So they expect we have to actually submit uh, an agreement to them that that we will um, that we have the funds available to complete the project, or that we will have the funds to complete the project. If, they, if we accept it. So is it wise to submit that entire project as is, as planned? <clears throat> well, if we if we are successful, even if it's just $500,000, uh, we will eventually have money to, to do it with the time frame that we're required to do it. Uh, whether it's you know, reaching out to other groups to sponsor the project, so if, if we're at 1.6 and you know we got to do it I mean that's one massive bake sale I got to tell you I mean there are other are there other are there other, uh, are there other resources I mean you're saying that you would just yeah you would how where, where would that come from uh, it's the money that we're the money the revenue that we've set aside right now has come from the Tax. Okay. So, so it would just basically be a war of attrition at that point. We're going to continue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then like I said, we'd be applying to the Sherman Trust. And, um, you know. Is there a time, 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 time limitation? Mm -hmm. Is there a time limitation on the money? If we accepted the money. Yeah, I think it's. I want to say it's two years. So there, we have a, we have a window. Of time. Did we decide? Are we? Is this going to be done in stages or all at once? Was that the there, there, well, that's the previous application was all at once, um, and and that I did ask that question a lot when I when I talked to people at the farming market, and the consensus was, no, if you're going to do it, do it. Right. I mean, the playground needs to be updated. We don't have a splash pad, so you know, the, yeah. our community really should have that. Um, you know. Uh, the, the pond has to be addressed. Um, the walking path around it needs updated. You know, well, if we don't do yeah. something, it's just going to fill in. At one, at one point, the pond is really an opportunity to make go away. Just because of, if you can't maintain it, then why have it? So you just run the creek through as is and not create a, a weird and pond collection. Um, that would be that would be a uh, subtraction. That would be sub subtraction, <clears throat> but it would be addition to the risk. You reduce your risk. The community doesn't want to see that pond go away. But does really? But the community doesn't. Want to oh, does it? Oh, it's good. Yeah. Because yeah, I think it's fish there. Yeah, I think it's a, a, a factor point. That's I mean, a. use it more if it's cleaned up. I can see it's getting way more traffic. You could call it the Lions Park mud pit. That'd be yeah. awesome. What do you use? The mud park. Sounds like a rec program. <laughs> <laughs> so are you looking for a boat, John? What, what are you looking for? Yeah, yeah. just the recommendations are applied. I, I don't Great. see what our alternative is. We do it. Right? Yeah. 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 Not to apply. That's, that's the other alternative. Yeah, the other alternative would be not to apply. But, but I mean, this is something that 
that you have feedback on. I mean, the public wants it. The public wants this to be taken care of. And by the way, I think the feedback you got on the playground is really good. Mm -hmm. That we really have two places now where activities can happen that are dependent from each other. Uh, I think that's one of the beauties of the way it's happening right now is you've got a picnic table, the picnic structure side, and you've got the play strip side. You can kind of separate uh, groups, and you can have the splash pad side and the uh, playground side. I think that's really good feedback. That'll keep the versatility of the park what, where I think uh, people enjoy it. And we've also, at the farmer's market, I mean, when we first applied for this, the farmer's market was in the parking lot here, and so having that farmer's market there now in movie night, uh, that's a new thing that we can add to our grant application mm -hmm. process. So this park is used a lot right. in the community, um, and it gave us an opportunity to get more public feedback on, on what they want, uh, and that they're in support of, of it. And that will be great to be able to do Good for you for being in the park and getting feedback, seriously. Really, that's that's excellent. Yeah, yeah. It was actually kind of fun. I actually had our um, development regulations there as well. I had some flyers on the ADUs and stuff for the planning commission. Nobody wanted to talk about that. They all came up to these. <laughs> I mean, you were there. I I I was there pretty the much time. the entire time. I hardly had time to eat. <laughs> Then that's that's sad at a at a farmer's market because right. you really do need to do a little of this. <laughs> well, I ended up doing that as I was eating as I was talking to people. <laughs> so I, I moved to support the project. I think uh, we got to move forward, and, and I moved to, to support it forward. Second. Do I have a second? Oh, second. All right, second. second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Right. Any opposed? No? Thank you. Rah, rah. It's done. important work. It's huge. Okay, so uh, I think we're at the adjourn time, and it's 9 o'clock after, so we got to get out of here. Um, motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. All right, second. second.